Okay, so today's job is to get the extractor fitted, ready for the new uh, range cooker that arrives on Tuesday. And uh, there's a couple of problems with uh, the fit out. It's not a conventional going in below units or between units. Uh, it's going into the alcove of an old chimney breast. And secondly, the actual extractor, uh, we're really restricted on how we can do it without getting something bespokely made. So I'll give you a quick look at uh, what's going on. So if you watched the kitchen series last year, this is the opening um, that we found and restored in the kitchen. And we've allowed the, uh, the spacing between the two bits of granite here to allow for the, uh, for the 900 mil range, uh, which is fine. And that's, that's literally ready to go. Temporarily, this little freestanding one has been in the middle. Okay, so as you can see from the mess, this was an old coal fireplace um, originally and up in here this is what we're dealing with so the front part of the wall uh, the brick arch actually tapers in so the actual distance is only about 20 centimeters uh, the, the main gap there at the back the flue you can see up there comes in from the garage and carries on up chimney sack and that is from the biomass boiler so we want to make sure we're well clear of that that's about uh, nearly a metre up, so that's fine. So unfortunately it's going to be four inch ducting through this wall and down, and then we can turn it to a, a five inch to carry on out to the outside. Uh, for the size of the fan, I don't think it's going to be a huge problem, um, but obviously it is going to restrict the model we could buy and uh, the actual volume of air that can be shifted out of the room. So if possible, we wanted to buy something uh, that's already on the market, rather than having to have an inline fan and then having to sort out our own grease trap and things like that. So we've found this one, which is made by Smeg. So the main restriction for us was obviously this width, the, uh, the, the depth of the unit. So with that in mind, we found this one and actually the, the slight slope of this just gets it in perfectly. I actually mocked it up, I wired this up and put some four inch ducting on here and there was no huge increase in the noise levels and it didn't seem like there was much resistance uh, of an increase so i'm hoping that that's going to be fine and at worst we might just have to run it at slightly lower fan speeds rather than the boost setting um to make sure we don't damage the fan so then it's time to measure up i've got a piece of um, plywood here i was going to do it in cement board in hardy backer but actually it's not going to be subject to much heat there um, or not a huge amount of heat and it's no different from having a wooden cabinet above anyway. So uh, measured up the opening um, and to its kind of maximum point cut that and then I made a cardboard template and with a pair of scissors I kind of slowly trimmed bits and scribed it um, to, the, to the wall and to the brickwork which is really uneven. Uh, so I made that cardboard then I lay it out on here, traced it out, jigsawed the whole lot and this is what we've got. Units like this normally come with dimensions for the cutout, which is where it slots up into. Uh, or you can just measure it like I've done here. So I've measured that internal um, moulded part of the metal and put it onto here. So we've done our layer. I've allowed for a batten because I'm going to put a, uh, a frame around this. Once I've got the whole cutout, then I'll uh, fix the, the actual frame to the wall and that will hold everything in place. The next thing to do is to do the cutout itself. So we've got our opening. I can check that out here, it's much easier. Slot it over to make sure the actual extractor fits in. And then I'll put the one inch batten onto the plywood and I'll screw that in. And then we can try and line it up and get it fixed to the wall. So my temporary little workshop is out here where the boiler's gone in and as you can see it's just a state anyway we'll get a hole drill to start with and then we'll jigsaw out that piece and go from there
So I've just done some rough cuts here. I've got the two long bits for front and back and a few little bits for the ends. All right, I guess the first thing to do is to make sure everything fits. So I just use a larger drill bit to countersink those and then once everything's up in place I'll just put a little bit of filler on those and give it a quick undercoat and paint. So in here, because of that slope of the brickwork, um, that the depth of the, the batten is actually going to collide with the brickwork. So I'm going to put some little corner brackets on here instead. So we've got our two little stubby bits on the end there and one long bit there and then we'll be done with the batten. Got these little corner brackets, which are a bit too big to put along this thin section, but on the ends it might be fine. So I'll probably put one of those on each end of the kind of fatter ends. And then these little furniture blocks, which are really helpful um, for kind of fixing cabinets together. They've just got a single hole and a double hole, it's a little plastic, really low profile as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fix um, a couple of these along the length. Uh, just kind of inside the the gap and then once these are fixed down to the actual ply then I can just put one fixing through there into the brickwork. So I'm going to put this job on hold because um, I think we might be having a baby in the next few hours so um, tools down. More important things to do. So we're kind of getting there now. Um, I've managed to undercoat the the back side, you know, the top of it, just so if any soot or anything falls down in the future, um, is you know, it's nice and protected. And I'll also give it another final spray of some lacquer just to make sure it's nice and uh, moisture resistant. So I'm just trying to mark up now. I've got the brackets on the front and a batten on the back, and we'll mark up, and then we can drill and do some fixings in there. So here's the view from below. The scribing along the back, I'm really happy with. Um, it's almost millimetre perfect, most of it. So uh, we've got a nice tight fit against there. Along the front edge here, I've scribed around all the brickwork. Um, there will be a small gap at the front there, which we'll need to fill, but not too bo um, bothered about that, that's fine. Right, now to get all the holes drilled now, and we'll get some fixings in. Bit of a dry fit, but it's a really nice snug fit. So pleased with that. So I'm just going to mark and pilot these screw holes, and uh, then I'll take this out and prime and paint the surround. Do all the uh, the kind of pointing and gap filling around it. Tomorrow morning I'll pick up that ducting that goes through there, and then hopefully we can get it connected. Right, so I just finished up painting, uh, just so it's all matching. Of course, this is going to be tiled in the next few weeks, but uh, for now, just giving it a quick lick of paint on this arch and all that woodwork. So we'll wait till we've got the ducting tomorrow, and then we'll be able to put it all in and turn it on. And 
that's the hole that goes through, that's the four inch hole. Right, so the wiring's in, um, and I'm going to push the slack back through because I don't really want much hanging around. It's been an absolute nightmare getting it up in here. Um, I've had to chip and chip and chip at the brickwork to try and uh, allow for this bit of ducting. This is probably the 20th time of trying to fit it, and of course now it's wired in and uh, the duct is all connected. It's a bit of a pain because I can't really put it to one side. Um, but I've got it supported on here. Jubilee clip, and I've put two self tappers uh, screws where it joins onto the spigot of the actual uh, extractor unit. So it goes up in this five inch, which is fine. And then I've put a reducer um, in here, which comes through in, uh, in rigid. And then from there on, it stays in this rigid box section down and all the way out onto the exterior wall. All right, so I've got success there. Um, it's now up in the void. It's down about two mil at the back. Actually, no, it's pulled it up now. Hopefully that hasn't distorted it. Um, we've got some corking to do along here, but apart from that, it's ready to sit the, uh, the cover over now. I'm gonna change out these awful halogen ones, which are 40 watt for some three watt LED ones, which will be just as bright. Right, I think it's time to get this wired up and give it a test run. So that was a 15 minute hunt for a 13 amp fuse. Would have been quicker to buy a new one. I'm hoping it's a, a good one. Ah, maybe not. Oh yeah? I can hear it blowing out some dust outside. Now, I'm pretty sure that it'll be a little bit quieter as well when the cup cap's on here, but not too bad. That's not its basic setting. So that's with those two LED bulbs. I think that's quite a nice even light in there. All this will be tiled white as well. And then we've got two more settings, which I'm sure will get a bit noisier as they go. Still hear a bit of dust being blown through. So excusing the unfinished uh, sides, that is how it's worked out. So I think we wouldn't really been able to go any bigger. That's a 700 mil canopy and we've got a 900 mil range, but that should be fine. The actual um, induction rings are fairly central within that. So this should cover the whole, uh, the whole of the rings. Okay, just had a call to say the range is half an hour off. So I've cleared uh, the pathway outside this side bit of land here and hopefully we can bring it in I'll open up these old doors and uh, and then we can wheel it through I don't know how they're going to deliver it but there's 
couple of guys, so hopefully they can get it as close as possible. I'm hoping they can actually bring it as far as this mat, and then I can wire it up. And I think it's got two wheels in the back, so I can probably do it myself and just wheel it back in.